This conference will now be recorded. Hello guys, welcome back. So here in this session, I'm going to start account receivable. So first of all, we'll explain theoretically what is this account receivable and all, then we'll uh, you know proceed further for the configurations and all, and there are several things we are going to discuss, even in account receivable also. So let's have a look one by one. Now, if you talk about account receivable, <laughs> look at here. When you go for Google search, look at here now definitions will be like very complex definitions are going to come guys. So the people who is from finance and account for those people, it's pretty easy to understand. But uh, people who is not from finance and account background for those people a bit difficult to understand. Look at here the first definitions when a company extend credit to the customer. The sales is realized first and the invoice is generated. But the company extend a time a time period to the customer to pay the amounts after some time. This outstanding receivable is treated as account receivable. Now look at here guys, uh, it's bit looks like a bit complex, right? But in a simplest way, I'll tell you generally what is happening. <coughs> See, as I told you, if you guys are able to remember account payable. So in account payable, what is happening guys? In account payable, whenever we are making any sort of say sorry whenever we are going to make any any sort of purchase from vendors whichever the purchase is there guys this is called credit purchase the purchases are happening on credit basis and vendor is giving us vendor is giving us a time certain time limit is given by vendors that okay you can make payment in 30 days or 45 days or 60 days whatever it is right so now in that case, uh, what is happening here? Uh, so whatever purchase we have made, that is going to be that is going to be you know paid after 30 days or 45 days. So in between, like let's suppose we have made a purchase worth of 5,000. So this 5,000 will be your liability. You must have to pay, right? And that is for your payable. In the same way, account receivable means <laughs> if we are expecting the purchase on credit. So whichever our customers are there in the sense Tata Motors customers are there. They are also expecting purchase on credit itself, right? So here what will happen now? So whatever the sales are. So if, if the customers are purchasing from us, it means we are selling the goods to the customers. So whatever the sales are there guys, the sales are also going to happen on credit basis itself, right? The sales are also going to happen on credit basis itself. So here uh, whatever sales has happened like of course like a particular amount worth of a particular amount let's suppose you have sold uh, you know the goods to a particular customer worth of 1 lakh 5 lakh 10 lakh 1 million whatever it is so after certain time we are going to receive that amount right so amount is not received yet but of course it is going to be received in future after 30 days after 45 days after 60 days right so that is whatever like so what is happening guys this is called our receivable it means you are having out like our outstanding there there is some outstanding amount is there which is supposed to be paid by customer right so those outstanding balances are called receivable or account receivable so the simplest definition is look at here account receivable or receivable is the outstanding balance of money or payment which is not received yet from customer sales we have made the sale and the payment is not yet received from customer so whatever those those like credit sales are there guys of course we are receiving those amount in future so that is called your receivable it means yet to receive the amount is yet to receive so this is our receivable guys and this is going to be treated as your asset, right? So look at here, account receivable are treated as current assets on balance sheet. So here, now if you talk about the configurations, configuration part of this account receivable, uh, you know, like how to do the configurations and all these, all things are going to be, you know, explained in details, uh, what configurations we are going to do and uh, uh, what are the steps is going to be explained, right? So now here, uh, if you talk about the configuration part, configuration part is quite similar. Quite similar. Look at here to account payable. In account payable, if you guys are able to remember, we have defined 
vendor account groups. Before that, for GL master, we have defined GL account groups, right? Now for customer, we are going to define customer account groups. Once again, now here I'll ask a question. I'll ask a question, what do you mean by account group and what does it control? Try to recollect guys. This is already explained during GL account settings and this is already explained during account payable settings also. So the same same definitions will be see what is the use of during GL account group. I told you that account group is the group of group of similar nature of GL GL account group. If you talk about GL account group, it is the group of similar nature of GL accounts, right? Likewise, vendor account group. It is the group of similar nature of vendor accounts. So in the same way, customer account group, it is the similar nature of customer accounts, right? Now, and what does it control? So what about GL account group, guys? What does it control? So GL account group controls, GL account group controls the fields of GL master, and it also controls the number ranges of the GL master. In the same way, vendor account group, what does it control? It controls the fields of vendor master, the fields which appears at the time of creation of vendor master, right? So it controls the fields of vendor master. At the same time, it controls the number ranges of vendor master. If you create a vendor, uh, try to remember, guys. If you set up a vendor, system is going to generate a vendor number where it is coming from. So indirectly, account group involved because number ranges we have created, and that number range code we are going to assign against account group, and vendor is getting created against account group. So first of all, vendor account. First of all, system. At the time of creation of vendor master. System is going to trigger account group in the sense vendor account group. Against vendor account group, what number range code we have assigned that is going to be triggered. And against that number range code, whatever range we are given, that is going to be triggered by system. And from that range, system is going to generate a number that is vendor master number. In the same way, now here for a customer account group. So customer account group controls what guys? Customer account group controls the field of customer master. And it also controls the number ranges of customer master. Now, so if somebody asks, what do you mean by customer account group, vendor account group, GL account group, then you have to speak specifically about the vendor or customers or GL. If somebody asks, what do you mean by account groups? Or what do you mean by account group? So in that case, what do you have to say, guys? This is a uh, general questions, right? 98% of the people they will start speaking about GL account groups only. I'll tell you guys, interviewer is not asking about GL account group or customer account group or vendor account group. Simply he asked, what do you mean by account group? Right? So it is a kind of diplomatic questions, right? Question, what, what do you mean by account group? So you also have to give a diplomatic answer itself. You just say that account group controls the fields of master data. Never say GL or customer or vendor. Since interviewer didn't specify which master data, right? So why should I specify which master data, right? So interviewer is asking a diplomatic question. What do you mean by account group? I'm also going to give diplomatic answer itself. Account group controls the fields of master data. It also controls the number range. That's it. Right? And it is the group of similar nature of master data, you can say. Which master data, customer, vendor, or GL? If you say CL account group, then similar nature of GL group of similar nature of GL account. If he says vendor account group, then group of similar nature of vendor accounts. And if he says uh, customer account group, then group of similar nature of customers. This is how you have to answer, right? And then apart from this, create the number ranges and all in the same way, the way we have created for uh, vendor during vendor, uh, what to say, uh, account payable basic settings. In the same way here in customer also, you have to uh, configure the same things. Then number range we have to assign to the account group. So these things we are going to, I'm going to explain these things again one by one. I'm going to explain in next session, guys. We'll set up this account groups and all number ranges and everything, and then we'll proceed further. So here, like in this session, theoretically I had to explain what is this account receivable and all. Next session onwards, we'll see practically everything. So that's all in this session, guys.